former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev. Aliens have been with us for some time, Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev acknowledged the existence of the aliens at the end of an interview with five Russian television channels. When asked an additional question, when the microphones were already closed. His answer leaves room for interpretation, comments in its Monday edition the Italian publication Corriere della Sera. In this regard, the newspaper wonders if the head of the Russian executive has made a joke or if his statement should be taken very seriously. Recalling that in the past Medvedev was not taken too seriously after compromising on a G8 summit exaggerating a bit with vodka. Immediately after the interview, Dmitry Medvedev said that when handing over power from one president to another in the Kremlin, along with the suitcase with nuclear codes, there are always two special files one of which contains complete information on all visits undertaken by aliens on Earth. The other case, according to the Prime Minister, a former president of the Russian Federation for a four-year term, contains confidential reports from absolutely closed secret services, which do not officially exist as institutions, that monitor aliens landed in the Russian Federation. According to Medvedev, the two files, along with the nuclear suitcase, are being handed over to the new president. At the end of the meeting with the television journalists, he mentioned that he does not want to specify the number of aliens living among us so as not to cause panic. Aliens have been with us for some time. I can't tell you exactly how many there are. We can't talk about it without panicking. But if you watch, men in black, you will understand that this is a reality, Medvedev was quoted as saying by Corriere della Sera. It seems that the Russian government is very well informed about the visits of the aliens on Earth, but it keeps silent under the pretext that this is how it maintains public order. The Italian newspaper comments in this regard. Prior to these statements by the Russian Prime Minister, the publication recalls, two similar episodes have taken place in the past. U.S. President Harry Truman has sent a note to the New Mexico Museum today, referring to the crash of a possible extraterrestrial aircraft. At a meeting of the UN General Assembly on September 21, 1987, U.S. President Ronald Reagan spoke of the threat of an alien invasion and that people should act together to prepare for a possible aggression. It is hard to believe that Reagan spoke from the UN rostrum after drinking a glass, Corriere della Sera comments. The first meeting with the aliens could take place in the summer. What does NASA think will happen then? The world is not yet ready for the news that there is life on the planet Mars, even if this could happen soon. It would be truly revolutionary, said Jim Green, head of NASA's scientific research team. Such news would completely change the way we see things. And I don't think we're ready for such news right now. No, we are not, said the NASA scientist. In the summer of 2023, NASA is planning a joint mission with the European Space Agency, which aims to send two special vehicles to Mars to drill to the surface of the planet, in the hope that life forms will be discovered. Given that Mars is affected by radiation at the surface, scientists assume that the only signs of life could be discovered only underground. The NASA spacecraft, along with ExoMars, the ESA spacecraft, will thus drill into the Martian crust. And the collected samples will then be sent to Earth. After drilling to a depth of several kilometers on Earth, scientists have discovered several microorganisms in the Earth's crust and hope to achieve a similar result on Mars. Thus, the mission is the best opportunity to answer the question. Are we alone in the universe? If scientists discovered traces of life in the Martian crust, this would be an extremely important discovery for astrobiology, says the head of NASA's team of scientists. The two Martian vehicles will also try to make it clear whether there really was water on Mars. It's simple. Where there's water, there's life, the NASA researcher concluded. One of the people on the moon thinks the Vatican is hiding information about aliens. Hillary Clinton has promised to tell the secret people of Area 51 if she wins. Until then, a former astronaut thinks the Vatican already knows about aliens. Edgar Mitchell, a member of the Apollo 14 mission and the sixth man to reach the moon, sent John Podesta. 
Hillary Clinton's campaign president, several emails about the existence of aliens. One of the most curious dates back to January 2015. And it was discovered that Mitchell and Podesta wanted to have a meeting to discuss a potential space war. In another August email, Mitchell warned Podesta, the current president of Hillary Clinton's election campaign and a former Obama advisor, that forms of extraterrestrial intelligence will not tolerate any form of military violence on Earth or in space. In the same email, Mitchell, who worked on the Treaty for the Prevention of the Placement of Weapons in Outer Space, wrote, We are clearly very close to a war in space. Most satellites orbiting the Earth belong to the United States, China, and Russia. Recent tests of anti-satellite weapons are not a cause for concern. He backed up his ideas with several links. Another shocking part is that Mitchell insinuated that the Pope knows about extraterrestrial intelligence, my Catholic colleague Terry Mansfield. will bring us up to date with the Vatican's extraterrestrial intelligence awareness. Explosive NASA revelations, aliens could have already visited Earth. NASA recently released new confidential documents, based on a request for freedom of information, regarding unidentified aerial phenomena. The report says that although no evidence of life beyond Earth has yet been discovered, the possibility of aliens existing and visiting our planet is not ruled out. The document posted by NASA on December 13, 2021 contains only less than 325 pages, and states that the United States Space Agency has one of its key objectives. The search for extraterrestrial life in the universe. The report states that NASA has not discovered any signs of extraterrestrial life, but is exploring the solar system and not just to help us answer fundamental questions, including whether we are alone in the universe. The U.S. Space Agency is on a space search. From the study of water on Mars, to the promising sounding of ocean worlds such as Titan and Europe, Saturn's moons and Jupiter, respectively. To the search for biological signatures in the atmospheres of planets outside our solar system, the missions our scientists are working together to find unmistakable signs of life beyond the Earth. Unusual phenomenon revealed by Nobel Prize winner, Time and space can be changed NASA's revelations come after the Pentagon released a report in June 2021 detailing what the U.S. government knows about a series of mysterious UFOs that have been observed in military airspace in recent decades. Documents now released by NASA prove once again that many unexplained flying objects have been observed on Earth. The nature of science is to better understand the unknown. When we find out about unidentified aerial phenomena, known as UFOs, they open the door to new scientific questions to explore. Most of the occurrences of unidentified aerial phenomena result in very limited data, usually single-angle video recordings, which can only be validated with eyewitness testimony. The NASA report said, NASA's document on unidentified aerial phenomena, as well as that of the Pentagon, is a turning point for the US government. After the military hijacked observations of UFO sightings for years, not making them public and classifying them as top secret, an American scientist announces the global catastrophe. Mass extinction begins on Earth for example, recently, an American pilot, flying over the Pacific Ocean at an altitude of about 12,000 meters, was stunned when he saw and filmed a fleet of 12 mysterious UFOs moving at high speed in proximity. Contact with aliens could end all life on Earth. We have to stop. Mark Buchanan is an American physicist and writer. He has been the editor of the international science journal Nature and the popular science journal New Scientist. He has been invited to write articles for the New York Times and currently writes a monthly column for the journal Nature Physics. An editorial in the Washington Post raises the issue of contact with an extraterrestrial civilization. In April 2020, the Department of Defense released videos recorded by infrared cameras on U.S. Navy aircraft documenting aircraft encounters with a variety of unidentified air phenomena. The pilots reported seeing objects flying across the sky at hypersonic speeds and changing direction. Almost instantly, capabilities far beyond those of any known aircraft. What did the pilots see? 
bizarre atmospheric phenomena, alien spacecraft, something else? Several government institutions have investigated the events, partly motivated by concerns that opponents such as Russia or China could have made spectacular technological progress. And by the end of this month, the government intends to publish a report revealing what they know. It seems that the government will say that there is no evidence of extraterrestrial activity, but that the incidents remain unexplained. However, there is a chance that we will all be grateful that we do not yet have any evidence of contact with extraterrestrial civilizations. Trying to communicate with aliens, if any, could be extremely dangerous to us. We need to know if it is wise, or safe, and how to handle such trials in an organized way. It is a subject of profound importance to the entire planet. For 60 years, scientists have been searching with radio telescopes, listening for possible signals from other civilizations on planets orbiting distant stars. These efforts have been largely organized by the SETI Institute in California, the acronym stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and have so far been unsuccessful. Becoming impatient. Some other scientists are now striving for a more active METI program for extraterrestrial intelligence messaging, which would not only listen, but would send powerful messages to other stars. Seeking to make contact, the search for aliens has reached a stage of technological sophistication and associated risks, which requires strict regulation at national and international level. Without supervision, even a single person, with access to powerful transmission technology, could take action that affects the future of the entire planet. The military continues to encounter UFOs. Why doesn't the Pentagon care? This is because any alien we meet in the end will probably be much more technologically advanced than we are, for one simple reason. Most of the stars in our galaxy are much older than the Sun. If civilizations occur quite frequently on some planets, then there should be many civilizations in our galaxy millions of years older than ours. Many of them would probably have taken significant steps to begin exploring and possibly colonizing the galaxy. Therefore, it is a deep mystery, known as the Fermi Paradox, after the Italian physicist Enrico Fermi, why we have not seen such aliens yet. Many solutions to the paradox have been proposed, including the idea that all civilizations, once sufficient technological capacity is reached, will eventually be destroyed. Or maybe the aliens are so alien and, unlike humans, we just can't interact with them. More alarming is the possibility that extraterrestrial civilizations will stay out of touch. Because I know something, the transmission of signals is catastrophic. Our history on Earth has given us many examples of what can happen when civilizations with unequal technology meet, in general. The most technologically advanced have destroyed or enslaved each other. A cosmic version of this reality could have persuaded many extraterrestrial civilizations to remain silent. Exposing yourself is an invitation to be plundered and devoured. Douglas Vukoc of METI International claims that it is unrealistic to worry about the danger of an alien invasion. After all, we've been sending radio and television broadcasts into space for a century, and a much more advanced civilization than ours has probably already detected them. If he wanted to invade, he would have already done so. He also argues that in the risk assessment, it is important not only to take into account the risk arising from taking action, but also not to include that action. Our world is facing a range of potential threats, including global warming and environmental destabilization. And it is possible that more advanced civilizations have already faced these problems and found solutions. If we do not send signals, writes Vakosh, we risk missing the guidelines that could increase the sustainability of our own civilization. It is also conceivable, he suggests, that we are making a spectacular misjudgment and a super-advanced extraterrestrial civilization could attack us precisely because we have not stretched. For obvious reasons, much of the thinking on these issues must be quite speculative. Perhaps the best way to follow this is to extend the discussion. If all of humanity is exposed to the possible consequences of trying to contact extraterrestrial civilizations, then more people should be involved in making decisions about what is wise and what is not.
It should not be left to a few radio astronomers. A new frontier opens up in search of extraterrestrial life. A critic of the idea of proactively reaching out to aliens, astronomer John Gertz of SETI, has developed proposals to move to a more inclusive public consideration of these activities. What we need, he suggests, are international laws and treaties to govern more explicit attempts at contact. Without broad prior agreement from globally representative bodies, says Gertz, contacting aliens should be considered a reckless endangerment of all mankind and should be strictly prohibited with criminal consequences. Probably exercised nationally or administered by the court, International Court of Justice in The Hague, there are currently no such bans. Some informal protocols for interacting with extraterrestrial civilizations have been adopted by researchers involved in SETI, but these are far from legally binding government regulations. This is mainly due to the fact that, so far, talking about meeting or contacting aliens has seemed largely speculative, if not a little disturbed, despite the apparent scientific plausibility of such an event. We don't know if there are aliens. They could be friendly, it may not be, given the potential risks involved in trying to make contact. It might be safer and wiser to wait, we can always contact later, and in the meantime, our passive listening skills are rapidly becoming stronger. Personally, all this makes me insensitive to any experiment in contacting other civilizations. Why take cosmic risks when we may have a much safer way to discover them if they are there? Of course. Even listening comes with some potential governance issues, if and when someone really identifies an alien signal, we'll have to decide if we need to respond, and if so, how. Certainly such an act, endangering all of humanity, should be the result of a collective decision. But there is no mechanism to encourage this now. Any individual or nation could take the human answer into its own hands. Both ways, listening to aliens or trying to appeal to them, have reached the stage where they need a wider public discussion. With an eye on the development of sensitive regulations, this will require the efforts of leaders of many nations, probably coordinated through the United Nations or a similar international body. It should happen now, or soon, before it's too late, 